Hey, what's up beautiful people listen i remember welcome to the channel today we have this very interesting video and it's titled the harsh reality for 50 percent of women single and childless by 2030 what wow 2030 that is seven years away from this but yeah let's check it out you see the ons data that came out a couple of weeks ago that said for the first time ever since records began 50.1% of women are childless by 30. So there are more mm. women without children at 30 than there are women with children. The first yeah. time ever. Well, so uh, this is uh, somebody clipped a part of one of my podcasts, I believe it was, where I was talking about what, what our society does to 19-year-old women or 18-year-old women, 19-year-old mm. women. We just lie to them all the time. You know, the first lie is there's nothing more important than your career more or less by definition. So that's the first lie. The second lie is there will be nothing more important to you in your life than your career. So that True. Lots of people believe this. I mean, I, I, I can say for sure that so many women were fed this lie that it has to be your career, your career and career. Your career would make you a fulfilled person. You have to pursue the career, get a good job, get a good position or job position and all focus on your career not focus on um, any other thing it's crazy and now most women are now seeing in the light and the truth to read Ooh. but yeah let's go on career so that's the second lie and then the third lie is there should be nothing more important in your life than the, your career so that's the third lie mm. and then I implicit in that is the idea that children are a burden and that the idea that women should have children is part of the oppressive patriarchy and should be resisted and who are men to tell me what I can do with my body and hey fair. true this right here I think this is where the, the problem lies or where the problem is because people are now especially with the way society is amplifying some things making in modern women think that you don't need a man and with the way people will be like no a man can't tell me what i can do with my body i can do whatever i want to do with my body i can give 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 my body to anybody i want and i can decide to not have a not have a child or not give birth i know that giving birth is a personal thing and it shouldn't be forced upon but the way society is now making it that um women are to be married to men just because they want to give birth or because of biological clock is where the problem lies it's doing more harm to the women than it is because more more than likely most women are now leaning towards that angle where they want to focus more on their career they they're not leaning towards um having or started a family i understand that lots of people don't want to start a family because of past traumas and the likes and everything start when you're ready start when you're fully healed not start a family only to relieve your trauma and all i understand that lots of people are in the healing stage and the likes but the point where society is now amplifying it on certain things about women that women should be single and should explore and do all of that what i'm just going to say is is not a one size fits all whatever rocks your boat do you and people should stop this idea that they want to conform by societal standards when in real sense most of it is not real but yeah let's go on hey fair enough and etc etc now I've worked in female-dominated occupations my entire life. Mm. I worked, for example, I worked as a daycare uh, worker way back when that was like 19, probably 80, something like that. And there were no men doing that, but I really liked kids, and so that mm. was fun. And I worked for social services in Alberta in the in the child care department, and uh, then I've been working as a psychologist either training or as a psychologist since then and that's been a female dominated enterprise increasingly as the years went by but even when i was first when i first entered it hmm. so i i'm in the post female in the workplace generation firmly i never experienced the world 
accept as that. And so I've watched women progress through their professional careers at every level of attainment from the lowest to the highest hmm. and observed what happened and relatively, I would say, bias free because I didn't know. And what I've seen is that as women progress towards their late 30s, no, late 20s, they there's a psychological transformation. And what happens is that they place less emphasis on their career and way more emphasis, particularly on having a child. And that really reaches a crisis point around 29 or 30 for the vast majority of women and, and their attitude flips. And I've seen it flip. Yeah, true for so many women. And you hear the point where people say they want to have this much amount of children by before they turn 30 or they want to have this amount of children before they turn a certain age. And that also still boils down to people placing some certain clock and some certain timeline because sometimes we can plan. We can plan all we want, but sometimes it's not always like that. It's not always so. That's why I always make it that people should stop those um, comparison when we are pe because one party or one person have given birth or birthed X amount of children before they turn 30 doesn't mean that others should follow suit. That's where the problem is. That's where people are having a problem. And the pressure is more on women because while society is also putting that timeline to women to say get married at a certain age give birth at a certain age have all of your children at a certain age society is also placing it to make them to say you have to focus on your career get your career get all of your degrees before getting married before starting a family before this and everything and you see that is where the problem is because society is creating like a confusion and a divide where lots of people are fo forced to be on one side or confused on which side to pick and all that's why i always run with do whatever rocks your boots if your lifetime goal is to start a family before a certain age or certain timeline do it or if if you're ready to start a, a start a family do it people should stop placing a certain timeline as to when they should start something if it starts only when you are ready, not because you gave yourself a certain goal or a certain timeline to put more pressure on yourself. That's where the problem is or where, that's where the problem lies. But yeah, let's go on. And I've seen it flip very dramatically with many women. Hmm. Um, and I suppose the most signal, single, most uh, convincing evidence of that, I worked with high-end lawyers in Toronto for about 10 years. I was part of an organization. We went to law firms, high-end law firms, huh. and said, send us your most productive people and we'll help them iron out whatever wrinkles there might still be in their life. And the advantage to them is that things will go better for them. And the advantage to you is they'll be even more productive. Yeah. And there's a good management dictum, which is pay the most attention to your most productive people because they're bringing in the bulk of your revenue disproportionately and so I worked with men and women who were at the peak of their careers in a very difficult enterprise and so these were women who were generally very attractive um, well put together physically mm. pretty stable psychologically extremely conscientious very very smart and high achieving from like junior high all the way through high school university law school onto uh, the top firms, rocketing up through the ranks, full partnership by the time they were 29 or 30. And all the law firms, all the women bailed out, all of them. The law firms couldn't keep them. Wow. And I, I was really, and I talked to the women a lot about a, lo a lot about this because I was very interested in it because I knew the law firms were bending themselves over backwards and tying themselves into knots trying to retain these women because mm. why wouldn't they, you know, just, just being greedy capitalists is enough. You know, they don't want to lose their high performing women because they're performing at the highest level and mm. they couldn't keep them. The women wanted to have nine to five jobs. They wanted to bind the job so they could have a life. And that was especially true 
once they got interested in having a child or had one. Mm -hmm. And what, what they really came to was a very uh, interesting realization. So because they were highly conscientious women, they sort of did their duty and, and worked hard and diligently and didn't pop their head up to ask questions. They were in junior high, they got the best grades. They were in high school, they got the best grades and so on all the way through right till they reached partnership. But that's sort of an apogee, right? You hit partnership in a senior law firm. It's like you're at, you're at the top of your top, profession. Yes, yes. Well, then what? Well, so then they looked around and they thought, hmm, here I am with all these like hyper competitive men, and I'm alone. perfectly willing to work 80 hours a week, nonstop to stay at the top. What the hell are they doing? Because that's the real question. Mm. What is it? What is it that characterizes this small percentage of hyper-competitive men? It's not. You can assume that that's how everyone should be, but first of all, that isn't how everyone is. Or you can flip that and say, well, there's only a small minority of human beings that are willing to do this, to work flat out eight hours a week. I mean, they're, getting, they're certainly being paid for it. Let's make no mistake about that. But well, what about the rest of life? Well, that's what the women ask. Wow. This one here is a great analogy. And lots of women fall into this category and society deemed it okay to make put this pressure on women to start your career, to be career oriented, career woman instead of starting a family. If you'd ask me, society is the one creating the confusion, creating this kind of chaos, playing with women's mind, playing with the women and everything. Because, because women are emotional beings and they, it's easier to convince a woman to do this. That's why society cater more for the women because they know that, oh, who are the people that um, would fit this data when we place a certain statistics or when we place something on the data, who, who would best fit this chart? More than likely, you can get a good amount of women. So society would place all of these because it has to cater for the right amount or the right numbers that they need to fit the chart. Honestly, whew, it's rising and it's becoming worse, way worse to the point where lots of women see starting a family as um, a burden or having a family as a burden because society deemed it okay to th think or to say to start a family is a burden and the like, which also boils down to start when you're ready. ready because we run and we say, oh, start a family now. And that is why lots of, most of the time we have tons of broken people start a family and all because most of them don't know how to they're just going by societal norms societal standards based on the fact that this fits the chart therefore let me fit in the chart to f satisfy the numbers and i always say this and i know lots of people would not agree with me but i always say they start when you're ready if you, if there, there are tons of things you want to heal heal first and be self, be more self-aware, so you don't repeat the exact same mistakes that your parents did, because it's gonna haunt you or haunt your children. And I know that lots of people, especially I'm speaking this based on the African perspective or, or the Nigerian perspective, because lots of people, more than likely, they have some certain trauma they've seen with their parents, they've seen, they've seen as a child, and they don't want to pass on that trauma or pass on that generational cycle to their family. So therefore, they want to get to a point where they are healed, they are ready, that they don't want to relieve those moments they had as a child or with their parents. And they, so more, more than likely, most people either for good or bad reasons they, they either want to be like their parents or or they don't want to be like their parents which in reality makes more sense because you don't want to bring based on the fact let's use for example someone who is from a broken home you don't want to bet or bring more children into a broken home like you because you're just repeating the exact same cycle and at what point is this cycle gonna stop or when is this cycle gonna break so it doesn't continue with the lineage or continue with the family lineage so i i, I must say that at some point some people 
there are some things they they want to get in place before starting a family more than likely most people are not look doing the career path some people are doing the healing path which in my opinion makes sense and i understand that lots of people will not agree with me or will not see it on from this angle but all the same i'm saying it from the nigerian or the african perspective but yeah let's go on why am i doing this and that's a great question well for men there's a different answer than for women mm. it's a really different answer and it isn't like the men are exactly thinking this through it's it's more like this is an integral part of male motivation mm -hmm. the more successful you are as a man the more women like you well the problem that you have now is that as women are getting better educated with more employment more status more prestige they compete themselves out of their ability to find an attractive mate as women raise up through the dominance hierarchy and this is competence who, hierarchy competence hierarchy sorry uh, okay. uh, who's going to tell women the equal access to opportunity that you have recently just acquired actually what that's doing is it's making it more difficult for you to find a mate that you're fundamentally attracted to yeah well mm. it 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 does a lot of things i mean it does provide women with a lot more uh opportunity on the economic front it does decrease their dependency on their mate in relationship to economic security and educating educating women countries that are willing to educate women that's the best predictor of their future economic success so if you look at developing countries and you want to find out what about a developing country is most likely to predict the fact that they will continue to thrive economically it's their attitude towards the education of women and a couple more things women's educational status predicts their children's educational status but men's educational status doesn't so that's also an important multi-generational effect um i i released a video i was going to conclude that other story i released a video or someone released a clip of me talking about some of the things we just talked about mm -hmm. and it went out on youtube shorts and it's got like five million views in a month or something like that and the comment section is unbelievably vitriolic is every single comment is vitriolic and it's mm. all from women it's like who is this old white bastard telling us what we should do with our bodies you know and i wasn't being judgmental i was just saying exactly what i said to you which is while well, i've watched women over the entire course of my life with i would say an affectionate eye you know i love my sister i love my wife i have a daughter i love my mother i'm pretty happy about women all things considered I don't have an axe to grind in relationship to how they should conduct their lives. I don't even know how they should conduct their lives. Mm. I've watched what happens. And I've also watched what happens to women who hit 29 or 30 and then can't conceive. And that is not a fate I would wish on anyone. It's awful. And 30% of couples fall into that. 30% of couples have difficulty conceiving. It's a lot. And the probability that you'll have difficulty conceiving increases with age. Well, part of this is true and that is where the problem lies where people place it to say biological um, clock and say this percentage is when you have good amount of children or good this and that listen see lots of times this is where the mistake or this is where the problem is yes there is a bi biological clock for people bo both men and women but the idea where people make it to say oh at this age is i'm just being realistic here we all know that yes based on biology or based on science they say if you want to produce if you want to have healthy children there is a certain age timeline where you have to birth your child and all but does it mean that people who've birthed their child in or exceeded that years don't birth healthy children it doesn't mean so it might be that some person birthed unhealthy children based on that age timeline but it does not categorically place all women or everybody into that timeline or into that box and that is what i'm trying to i want to point out because lots of people basically to say oh yes this is it therefore they put put more pressure on themselves and now i'm just speaking it because on so many counts so many counts people run with biological clock and these and that and all of these most of the time 
all of these things because it happened to one person doesn't mean it's uh, is going to happen to everybody yes there are precautions there are safety precautions one needs to take and be aware of the risk risks involved but that does not mean that everybody in that timeline or in that age group would experience the exact same thing and that's just what people need to have in their mind and i still would repeat and i would i still would say start when you're ready don't do it because people are saying this is the certain time or this is the time you should do it therefore you should do it and go in when you're not ready do it when you're ready start a family when you're ready if your aim to pursue a certain career is to do it five years down the road and during that five years or within that five years along down the road you you, you found out that you're ready to start a family do it doesn't mean that it should be based on timeline that's why i i'm always of the opinion that people should stop this idea where they want to place everything on the um, timeline to say by in f in five years this is where i want to be what if in the process between in the process of you getting to doing this within the five years you exceeded or before you before you attain the five years you exceeded your goal or exceeded your limit does that mean that you have to wait for the five years timeline to do that no and also people should stop this comparison and compare it to say that is the same for everybody is not the same and that's just it but yeah let's go on with age and so you know say la vie and but it, it's very interesting to me to see how vitriolic those comments have been and how how uniform that is because usually on my youtube channel in particular 95 percent of the comments are positive and this is completely the opposite of that hmm. so and then so you brought this up at the beginning you said 50 percent of women now at 30 50.1 50. 50. a childless by 30. yeah yeah well you know that's uh that's not good that's a sign of something profoundly wrong with the entire culture at an extremely deep level I don't think that women need to take it as us trying to tell women what they should or shouldn't do, but I think that it would be very fair to say that you need to be an incredibly unique woman to make it to 50 without a family and look back and think, yeah, I did this right. That's not to say that those women aren't out there. They absolutely are. I know some of them. Well, this is an interesting conversation to have and to hold because um while some some persons will say they are right about this or this is how they see this others will say oh this is how they see this and everybody people others will be right on their own stance or on their own perspective more so have people also come to the realization to see that some people don't want to birth a child i understand that yes having a child or birthing a child is a beautiful experience is a beautiful thing but there are some people that don't want to birth a child does that mean or does that make them not worthy of being a parent or being a mother or does that mean that they won't be fulfilled there are some people who who would want to be a mother sarah let's say for example when when i say mother sarah like they want to have tons of children around but they don't want to birth all of those child but they can make use of the adoption services doesn't mean that because they don't birth a child they are childless because that is what lots of people would make it to seem like and i'm glad because at some point society is moving to a point where they don't shame women anymore for not birthing a child because there are tons of services people can use to become a parent that's why i said and I, I and i'm still sticking with this start a family when you're ready don't do it because a certain somebody is doing it or somebody have said oh you're gonna be childless you're gonna be unhappy because you don't have a child at at a certain age or at x amount of age or focus on your career sometimes the, the the thing is sometimes some people when when they say focus on your career some people they just get so all up in their head or engrossed with the idea that okay okay this is what i want to focus on i don't want to focus on this aspect of my life i just want to put 
all of my eggs or, or all of my focus on this without knowing that they are also hurting themselves or putting the stop to other areas of their life that's why i said if you're starting a career or if you're in a career or a career woman and somewhere down the road or somewhere along the line you found out that you're ready to start a family don't put a hold on that there are tons of women who's got families who's got their families with them and are still career women does that mean that they've not achieved their goal or they are not fulfilled so this idea where people want to focus on a certain area of their life or certain part of their life is where we should start encouraging more women to not put a certain aspect of their life on hold because as humans we are multitaskers and women are multitaskers by nature so if you can be a career woman that i mean there are tons of women these days who are career women and who also have beautiful families so the idea to put a timeline is what we need to stop and we need to put a stop to but all the same this was an, an interesting conversation to hold and to have and yeah i'm sure a lot of people would have different opinion as regards mine and as regards um, jordan peterson but i mean from everybody's perspective or from everybody's angle they are right in their opinion and it's not to say that anybody's opinion is the best over the other it's just where you're at it's just based on how you say things and of course you are right everybody um i've got different opinion and we should also respect that but yeah let me know what your thoughts are in the comment down below what are your thoughts about this so far i really love your honest contribution to this you can share other useful information you think might be really helpful make sure to like comment and subscribe and all of that stuff and until next time see you in the next video